So there was a gigantic leak that just came out. It's called the Pandora Papers, and it's on a global uh, money laundering, tax avoidance, corruption elite scheme. And I have to say, this is yet another example of something that's going to get probably one one hundredth the coverage that it should get. I don't think mainstream media will touch this other than maybe a quick passing segment. And I honestly think that even in the new media space, segments like this um, won't do as well as a random segment on Ben Shapiro or Alex Jones or whoever. Because unfortunately, conflict sells, personalities sell, and sometimes even substantive stuff, even among very serious people, sometimes it falls short because it's a little too um, abstract and esoteric. And um, that's a shame, it really is. But let me give you uh, the information because the details are incredible. Hundreds of world leaders, powerful politicians, billionaires, celebrities, religious leaders, and drug dealers have been hiding their investments in mansions, exclusive beachfront property, yachts, and other assets for the past quarter century, according to a review of nearly 12 million files obtained from 14 different firms located around the world. The report released Sunday by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists involves 600 journalists from 150 media outlets in 117 countries. Jesus Christ. It's being dubbed the Pandora Papers because the findings shed light on the previously hidden dealings of the elite and the corrupt and how they have used offshore accounts to shield assets collectively worth trillions of dollars. More than 330 current and former politicians identified as beneficiaries of the secret accounts include Jordan's King Abdul II, former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, Czech Republic Prime Minister Andrzej Babis, uh, Kenyan President Uru Kenyatta, Ecuador's President Guillermo Lasso, and former associates of both Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan and Russian President Vladimir Putin. They continue here. The billionaires called out in the report include Turkish construction mogul Erman Ilkak and Robert T. Brockman, the former CEO of software maker Reynolds & Reynolds. Many of the accounts were designed to evade taxes and conceal assets for other shady reasons, according to the report. The new data leak must be a wake-up call, said Sven Geigold, a Green Party lawmaker in the European Parliament. Global tax evasion fuels global inequality. We need to expand and shape the countermeasures now. The Pandora Papers are a follow to a similar project released in 2016 called the Panama Papers. We covered that as well, compiled by the same journalistic group. The latest bombshell is even more expansive, porting through nearly three terabytes of data, the equivalent of roughly 750,000 photos on a smartphone, leaked from 14 different service providers doing business in 38 different jurisdictions in the world. The records date back to the 1970s, but most of the files span from 1996 to 2020. Okay, so... Just to give you some more on this, the latest investigation dug into accounts registered in familiar offshore tax havens, including the British Virgin Islands, Hong Kong, and Belize, those are notorious tax havens, but some of the secret accounts were also scattered around in trusts set up in the U.S., including 81 in South Dakota and 37 in Florida. For instance, King Abdul II of Jordan set up at least three dozen shell companies from 1995 to 2017, helping the monarch buy 14 homes... 14, worth more than $106 million in U.S. And, U and the U.K. One was a $23 million California Ocean View property bought in 2017 through a British Virgin Islands company. Let me... Now let me try to put this uh, more into perspective for you. There, now, there aren't many, maybe if any, Americans listed in this piece, which is curious, leading some people to speculate this was from U.S. intelligence that a lot of this stuff came out. Uh, but they actually do put a line in the original piece on the fact that there aren't many Americans in there because our tax system is so atrociously bad and corrupt that they effectively get away with paying no taxes legally here. So they don't need to use as many different shell companies and offshore stuff because, you know, and we covered the story from ProPublica that came out not too long ago. The actual effective tax rate of a lot of billionaires here is anywhere from 0% to like 10% at the absolute most. You know, because they don't take their money as income. They don't report it as income, so they don't have to pay, like, 37% uh, tax rate on it. So, they just keep the money in the company, and there are a trillion loopholes where, like, Elon Musk, I think, was effectively paying 3% in taxes or something like that. So, uh, I don't really buy that this is just, like, a U.S. intelligence leak, and it's trying to make everybody else look bad while it makes us look good. No, I think it's actually accurate that our tax system is so atrociously bad and there are so many legal loopholes 
that corporations and billionaires oftentimes get away with paying nothing. Some corporations have what's called a negative tax rate, which means they just get a giant subsidy from the federal government and from taxpayers. Okay, so, um, to put this in perspective for you, the top 1% of Americans uh, may be dodging as much as $163 billion in annual taxes, according to the U.S. Department of Treasury. Corporations dodge $90 billion a year. Billionaires dodge $5 trillion over a decade. $5 trillion. And particularly in the U.S., uh, in 2011, 12% of millionaires were audited by the IRS. Uh, and as of today, it's only 3% of millionaires are audited by the IRS. So the bulk of IRS enforcement is going more towards the working class. A and it's probably less enforcement overall as well. And the top 1% account for 70% of underreporting. So, and that's, a lot of this is the U.S., the $5 trillion number is not just the U.S., but guys, to sum this all up, it's very simple. George Carlin famously said, there's a big club, and you ain't in it. And it turns out, um, there really is a big club of uh, government officials, celebrities, billionaires, elites, and they've managed to figure out a way to cheat the entire system, and they've done it in an incredibly organized fashion. And the stuff that they've gotten away with is absolutely astounding. And this report shines a light on it. And um, it's, it's my old take that I come back to time and time again. If you can look at this report and you don't support redistribution of wealth, I don't know what's wrong with your brain. Redistribution of wealth is the duh position. Because... First of all, these people didn't earn this money in the first place. It's not like they just worked harder than everybody else. But also, even though they have way more, they're also then cheating the system in order to not pay their fair share. So if you're a working class person, you know, you're paying your taxes and you feel like a sucker because you're doing the right thing. You're playing by the rules. Then you have these assholes who had a lot of luck. Maybe they were born into wealth. Maybe whatever it might be, they got to the top of society and then they're paying less than you when you make a normal salary. And they're so rich, their money makes money. That's another thing that people don't talk about. And Mitt Romney is the perfect example of this. He made like over $10 million a year simply from his investments. And we know this because when he ran in 2012, he had to disclose. And he's paying a lower tax rate because he's paying capital gains as opposed to the income tax rate. You guys know how this stuff works. So effectively, this is something that I... I coin not too long ago, we live in something that much more resembles what I'd call an anti-meritocracy as opposed to a meritocracy. The idea of a meritocracy is, you know, the harder you work, the further you go. It's sort of like, think of sports as a pure meritocracy in many respects. I mean, you have to have some natural talent, of course, but then if you work really hard, you can get great. And so you, that'll pay off. There's, you know, a direct relationship between how hard you work and how much, how much better you do when you're on the field or the court or whatever. Um, the way society functions is effectively in, it's an anti-meritocracy. The way the economy functions, the way politics functions, it's really an anti-meritocracy. And so you have all these people who made it to the top and they're already phenomenally wealthy, already far overvalued, whether it's celebrities or billionaires or government officials or whatever, uh, financial elites, and then they cheat the system as well. And it's a big club and you ain't in it. Um... One time somebody came after me for calling uh, basically the group of elites that control politics a cabal because they said Kyle Kalinske is going into QAnon. Eh, wrong. Let me be clear. QAnon is completely batshit insane and not real at all. And also, there is an elite cabal. And this is the cabal we're talking about. I don't know what it is. Maybe the top 0.01% or something like that. You know, how you define it might vary, but um, you shouldn't be surprised that how highly organized and structured it is. Because listen... Look at the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing. You know, previously, most of us probably would have said, I don't think there's some, you know, elite group of pedo sex criminals. And then Jeffrey Epstein stuff came out and we were like, oh, oh. And now you see the same thing here when it comes to financial wealth. Now, I'm not saying everybody who's in the top 0.01% or top 1% is a pedophile. Of course not. Uh, but what I'm saying is, 
perhaps there's more organization than people previously thought. And the whole system is geared towards their benefit. And this is a great example of it here, just how much they dodge accountability, cheat the system, um, hide their money, as you pay a higher tax rate when you're just a regular person working a regular job. It's grotesque and it needs to be reformed immediately.